Welcome, everybody, for the next uh, speech uh, by Luka Isailovic. We will try to start a little bit, like one minute earlier, so to give Luka a little bit more time. So I guess everybody can take the seat. And Luka, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Luka Isailovic. I'm co-founder and CTO of Bizlet. So the, the theme of today's talk is going to be MPC versus account abstraction. But not like in, in, uh, in well, like which technology is going to prevail as the top one you're going to use, but whether we can combine them in order to produce better like UX and better security for, for the end users. Also, it's not going to be like too technical, so we're going to mostly talk about the product and the UX rather, rather than the implementation itself. So I'd like to open this by looking at a few headlines from the last year that like made some traction. And that's downfall of these companies like FTX, Celsius, Voyager, and, and so on. But not in terms like uh, what happened, but I'm going to ask, why was there so much money there in the first place? You know? And that probably has something to do with these other types of headlines we see every few weeks. And that's like X amount of money was lost to the mismanagement of private keys, or there was a hack, or whatever. So essentially, if you're going to be in crypto for, for the long term, Self-custody is important, but also it's hard because if, if it weren't hard, like everyone would be doing it, and that's usually not the case, as we can obviously see. What's making it hard is the private keys. Uh, we simply don't know what to do with them. First, like when the first wallets came up, we had files. We were supposed to like download these files and keep them secure in, in whatever way we can. That usually like didn't, didn't end up well, as we can see. Also, we had seed phrases, which didn't improve things much because, again, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, imagine this real world situation where a customer would go into the bank and there would be this bank employee opening account, and, and by the time you're done, they give you like this sheet and, and say, okay, like, these are these words and uh, keep them safe. But if you don't, like, if anyone sees this ever in the future, your money is gone, irreversible, like, done. So, if that were the case, like, nobody would be using banks. And not to mention like the hacks and other stuff you have to worry about. So multi-six like improved, improved the situation like slightly, but again, like we are not using them much. Why? It's because of the UX. And the issue is at the bare minimum, you have to have multiple wallets. So, and like the optimal solution is to have multiple devices. And even if you figure that out, that's just for the, for the one coin. Like multi-sync implementation is different for, for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, we have smart contracts. For another thing, we have totally different stuff. So we have to figure it out for, for each coin differently. For the end user, again, like if we introduce like friction, they're just going to do what's easiest for them. So finally, we come to the MPC. I'm sure you, you've heard the term like over, over the years on Twitter, at least, and Reddit. So it basically stands for multi-party computation. And the, the general definition is that we have multiple parties with their private inputs that join, like jointly compute some, some output, like in these rounds of communication. That's like a basic definition. And why I say it like that is because this wasn't like um, invented for crypto, by the way. This is from, from the 80s, the multi-party computation. Like the, it's in cryptography, not, not in crypto. And also by saying it like that, it sounds like pretty similar to the multisig because we have these private shares and in multisig we have private keys, we have joint output and in, in multisig we have like the signed transactions. So what's, what's the difference there? The, the MPC is working like layer below multisig. So instead of like specific blockchain implementation, we are working with like cryptographic keys directly. So what that allows us to do is, the, is to have like seamless experience for multiple different coins. And instead of private keys, we're working with key shares which are by itself like nothing significant. It's just, it's just a string, you know, the, the piece of like text. That's also uh, important for the, for the privacy standpoint because right now if, if you show me like multi-sig, for example, on Ethereum, which is probably something like uh, Gnosis Safe or other smart contracts, I can pretty easily like ind identify how many signers there are, when did they sign a transaction, and like, like how many left, and basically everything regarding the, the policy of your wallet and, and then your company, maybe if you're using it for the company. And for the differences for the MPC on the, on the blockchain, it looks like any other transaction, so I, I cannot say anything. It could be like one signer, 20 signers. I, I don't know anything about that. Also, it's off-chain, so I don't have to deploy any data on-chain, and also I don't have to store any data off-chain, and that also makes it free, which is not, again, the case with the, with the Ethereum Spark wallet specifically. Like, Bitcoin is different. We have native multisig there. Also, pretty big one here. 
We talked about UX and friction between users, but also there's a friction be between like um, these technologies and, and development and the product they're, they're using. So dApps already deployed don't change. They, they're not required to change anything to support multi-sig. Like even if you, if you support any other wallet, you're supporting multi-sig already. I mean MPC, sorry. And then comes account abstraction, like I'm sure everyone, everyone here like heard about it. So we're not, not gonna go like too deep into explaining what it is. So everything we've been using up to now is EOA, like externally owned account, and account abstraction is basically a smart account on, on the blockchain that's like controlling uh, some money. So I'd like to ask here, like, like, is like um, we had this for years, you know, Gnosis Safe wasn't invented like last year. We had uh, accounts holding crypto with different um, like rules and policies over the years. So, so why are we talking about account abstraction now? And that's uh, probably like standardization, you know, 437. And that's important because standardization gives us a framework like that, that, that we can follow in order to build our products. And, and that is like explaining the, uh, expanding the ecosystem because frameworks like fuel further adoption between developers, I mean. <clears throat> also, um, instead of like signed messages with account abstraction, we have this user operations, which are basic, basically intents for the user. Like so user wants to do something, instead of like sending a signed message, he sends user operation. <clears throat> and that's important as well, because we have a standard way of defining these things user wants to do. And that allows us to do gas abstraction, bundlers, paymasters, whatever. A few downsides of account abstraction, it's EVM only, and you have to pay fees in order to get wallet. And th that's, that's a pretty big one for the users because, again, um, I was just checking like a few days ago, it, it costs around 10 or 15 bucks to, to deploy an Argent wallet. That's not good for, on, on the Ethereum mainnet. Also, some dApps require additional support. Like, not everything works out of the box. So we have an issue there as well. Like, um, if you're a developer at this company, like, imagine going to, to who's ever above you and saying like, yeah, we need to support 437, however, like that's for the, this 2% of the user base instead of like fixing this button that's not working for, for months and it's like annoying everyone else. That's hard sell as well. Um, so this is a, an example of user operation that's standardized by the way that account abstraction is using. And um, down, down below we can see that we have this signature uh, in, in the user operation and signature comes from the private keys. For, th that's like in reference to the digital signature. And that's weird because uh, I was reading on Twitter just, just like a few days ago and, and, and ever, ever since uh, account abstraction came along that we don't have private keys. Like we have this different thing. We eliminated private keys. We have sign in with Google now. So what's happening with this? Well, what happened is that we used MPC already to make AA better. Like every time you, you use sign in with Google to, to do anything with uh, smart wallets, you already use MPC, and how does it work? Well, uh, we have these companies that are basically authentication providers, and they have, in the background, a decentralized network of MPC nodes, okay, holding these private shares, shares of the key, and by signing in with Google, you are giving the network an authorization to use your key on your behalf to sign user operation that goes again to the, to the account abstraction um, wallet, and then it goes on the network. So we have already like achieved better UX on account abstraction by using MPC. I don't see like uh, much talk about that. Like we talked about, we talked about eliminating private keys with account abstraction, but it's not, it's not there because again, we need signature for each user operation. So we need to have some private keys somewhere. Um, so we used MPC to make AA better, but can we also use AA to make MPC better? So why would we even want to do that? You know, uh, AA is going to deprecate MPC. Well, it's not, uh, as we can see right, right now. We are only using it, so we need to make it better. And also, there are different chains. I know we're here at like ETHCC, so we're all like Go Ethereum here, but there are other chains as well that we need to take care of. Um, the big issue with MPC, as we know, is like a reshare. So we can, we can engage in this algorithm where nodes exchange their old shares for their new shares. And that's an issue because Node can always save their old, their old share and use it after the fact, after we after we've done reshare whenever they want. Uh, and that's an issue in decentralized systems because we cannot control them. However, most MPC Im implementations right now are not decentralized. They are between you as a customer and some other company as MPC provider, whether it be like Fireblocks or, or Web3 Auth or whatever we're using for, for, for these services. So it's basically always two out of two. 
And if we don't want to make that like a custodial wallet uh, where we don't have like full control, we have to make this company give up their share to us whenever we want. And um, like the, the most, the most like common case I've seen so far is they, they give you this key to download in, in like a file format. Uh, or, or like they encrypt it and you have to, to enter this password, whatever. So basically we have, we've made a full circle, you know, we've come to the beginning where we had these Bitcoin wallets where you download the key. So it's not good for, for the UX standpoint. <coughs> so how can we make this better, you know? Uh, we can use AI to make this recovery of the shares decentralized. There are these things now called decentralized access control and encrypted, encrypted uh, decentralized networks. So there are pretty interesting papers on this and interesting protocols developing on it. For example, like um, Ceramic Lit, you know, pretty awesome project. And uh, we can use these decentralized access controls in order to say to, as a user to the MPC provider, okay, I don't want your share right now because I don't want to like take care of it. I don't know what to do with it. However, I, I, wanna, I want you to make it available for, for me to, to get it at like, you know, whenever I want, like in case you're not around, I want to make a transaction without you. So we can say to this <coughs> MPC provider, okay, encrypt the share with, with the symmetric key and make, like, make it accessible with my account abstraction wallet. So I can produce a signature in order to get that key and download it whenever I want. So why are, why, what are we getting with this? First, like you don't get it right away because you don't want to store it. And secondly, you can get it whenever you want with the like policies, however you set it up. So for example, you don't want to worry about it at the start, like with this recovery. So you want to make it as fast as possible. So you just say, okay, I'm signing in with Google, another MPC wallet, by the way, to auto authorize my account abstraction wallet to authorize the recovery of my MPC share. However, later, like for example, you're using company wallet, you want to use di multiple di of these like authorizations. So you set up, so you set it up with your company members. So multiple sign in with Google's and then uh, a new CTO comes around and says, like, this, this is not good. Uh, we're using signing with Google, we are dependent, bad one. So you can always exchange it. Like, the good thing with account, account abstraction we, is we can always change who has the signing permission, which key. So I can attach, for example, my hardware wallet or multiple hardware, hardware wallets. So I can compose this as much as I want because, uh, again, we, we've gone full circle here. here. We're using MPC in order to, to authorize account abstraction, and then using another account abstraction in order to recover MPC share, kind of like um, like the movie, the Inception thing here going on. And the, the best thing is like we can do it as, ma as much time as we want. Like we can do it just once or 10 times, whatever. So composable security is good security. And what we've achieved is we have achieved decentralized recovery of MPC shares. And by the way, this is not uh, just uh, theoretical, like made up. Uh, stuff based on some paper somewhere. We're actually uh, doing it right now at Bizlet and it's gonna be available in production next month for, for our customers. Uh, the end goal with this is basically to increase the UX of the wallets. And by increasing UX, we're gonna increase the security and, and of course this decentralization because what's important here is like we have this secure solution and we have them for years like Nozi Safe and so on, but nobody is using them. Because user, user is always going to use what's easiest, and that's not, that's not it. We have to make the secure solution easiest to use, and by doing that, we're going to promote decentralization. So uh, that's it for me. Uh, I, don't have, I don't think we have time for any questions right now, so if you want to talk about this further, uh, you can always find me at, at the conference, and um, I'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you. Luca, uh, you were actually very fast, so we have like three minutes for questions. Great. So, are there any questions? No? Ah, one question is here. Great. Great. Just a question about. I, I can hear you if you want to stand up. Yeah. Sorry. Hello? Yeah, uh, Hi. just a question about MPC. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you uh, revoke share? Like, if you have a centralized I, yeah. that has a yeah. share, how can you revoke it? Yeah, that's, that's basically the issue. It's called, the, uh, you cannot revoke the share. You can issue new shares, uh, which correspond to the same output. So, for example, if you have new shares that, that when they engage, they produce the same signature as the old shares. Great, but, but you yeah. still didn't revoke the old exactly, shares. Exactly, exactly. You cannot revoke, revoke old shares because the, the parties can always save them. Like, you can say, we're not using them. But that's not stopping me from, like, saying, okay, uh, I saved them and I can use them later. 
but that's that's an issue in decentralized environments. Like, so, so if you, what you're saying is that the only way for me to revoke some centralized service I get mm -hmm. here is change the uh, change the, the address, ch change yeah. the key. Or change the address, or change the signature key. If it's using yeah, but you cannot change this. Yeah, you change anyway, all shares. Exactly. So, so the only way for you, if you if you already have like some MPC provider and you're using it for your wallet, the only way to move away from them is to send money to another wallet because they can always like save their share. If you say don't use it, like they say okay, but you know nothing nothing is stopping them from using it in the future. Yes, I think uh, you know one big premise about what mm -hmm. you're saying is that there's like a protocol like Clit or something under the hood that basically decentralizes the share storage, mm -hmm. or like one of the share storage or multiple mm -hmm. shares. Exactly. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's like that's like the the, the main trust point. Yeah. And how do you know that there's no collusion in that network and all that? Like, I mean, that's uh, that's a big assumption. The, the main premise is yeah, you you are right. So uh, we have to use IPFS or storage or some network like that in order to store this share somewhere for the long term. Uh, if they are compromised, well, I guess yeah, it's not going to work. So this essentially, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to rely on IPFS, in on on storage being decentralized or these other networks, whatever, decentralized network storage. We have a few of them now, so I wouldn't say it's like a new technology uh, is in regards to decentralized storage networks, so I think we're pretty good there, i say. Okay, so the share is encrypted on like Clit and whatever. It's not that they have shares like, and they can do like signatures on their, on their own. It's literally just like an access control mechanism. You store it on, on some conditions, it will give me back, but the encrypted share. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's gonna give you the, the share encrypted, and you can decrypt it with the your account account abstraction wallet. For example, we are using account abstraction, but you can use any wallet. For example, you can decrypt it with your uh, ledger account or whatever you're using, and uh, that's 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 the interesting thing here because uh, that's just for share of the of your provider. You always have your share on the other side, also can be encrypted and stored in the, in the same or different way, and that's what what I. M Mean, meant like uh, with composable security. You can choose to do it like the simplest way now, but you, for example, store it on Google Drive and have like IPFS as a backup, and then you can store it again on, on storage. You can basically store it on 10 different decentralized networks and, and say something like, okay, if one of these fail, I have other nine, whatever, you, you can do all of that. Thanks. Sure. Uh, first of all, congratulations, very good talk. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you heard about MEF, KGF, and mm -hmm. what's your thought about, about it? Yeah, um, so I'm not quite familiar with that, but I, I'd like to talk to you, or I mean, after the fact, if you can, uh, you know, explain it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ilka. <coughs> um, 